Hallelujah. You know, God is, has sent me today to encourage you. Once again, I love to encourage God's people because when I encourage God's people, I encourage myself. Amen. It's always a blessing to, to be an encouragement. Amen. So I'm asking God for the gifts of encouragement, the gift of exhortation. Stretch forth your hand today towards me right now. Come on. Stretch forth your hand and say, Lord, send forth your gift of encouragement in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for praying for me. Amen. Well, the word I have for you today is to just remind you that God has not forgotten you. God has not forgotten you. Now, I know most of you remember this, and, and, and maybe you know that at the back of your mind, but Peter said something that I want to just reiterate. It's from 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 12. He says, I will always remind you of these things. Notice what he's saying. I want to always remind you of these things, even though you know them even though you know them and are firmly established in the th truth you now have. And then verse 13 says, I think it is right to refresh your memory as long as I live. So I believe it's, it's good to refresh your memory now and again about some of the truths of the Word. Amen. And I know most of us believe in our minds that God has not forgotten us. Sometimes we, we feel like He's abandoned us. Or sometimes we feel like, what's happening to me, Lord? Amen. Anybody been there? I said, anybody been there? Yeah. Amen. But God has sent me today to tell you that he has not forgotten you. I want you to turn to somebody and say, God has not forgotten you. Forgotten you. Say it again. God has not forgotten you. Forgotten you. Amen. He has not forgotten us. Amen. Now, I don't know how many of you watched uh, the movie Home Alone. It's an old movie. And it's, uh, I, I particularly love the movie. I know my kids love the movie as well. It was a great success. It had a sequel. But this is a story of a young um, little boy, you know, Kevin. He's about eight years old, and he's accidentally left home alone while his family sort of flies to France for Christmas. So here he is, he's left home alone, and he has to sort of ward off these burglars. He's, he had some idiotic burglars that have timed, you know, to make sure that there's nobody in the house. But he's left home all alone, and he wards off these burglars, and he's somehow able to triumph over them. The point is that he was left home all alone. Amen. Now, a lot of us Christians sometimes feel that God has forgotten us. We may not say to the pastor, you, you, you come to church and say, how are you doing? So, praise God. You know, somebody says, how are you doing? So, oh, everything is good. But when somebody gives that testimony, you sometimes wonder, what about me, God? When somebody testifies of their breakthrough inside of you, you're saying, what about me? And, and, and it can, you know, steadily it can erode your confidence in God. You know, the devil sometimes will try to make it seem as if God has forgotten us. It's a strategy of Satan. I said it's a strategy of Satan. He will want us to think that God has forgotten us. I'm here to say God has not forgotten you. Amen. He can't forget you, but it's a strategy from Satan, and it's an effective strategy, and it's a subtle strategy. It comes slowly. It doesn't happen immediately, but slowly, you know, especially when you're going through a prolonged trial. It's like, when is this thing going to turn? When am I going to get the breakthrough? I've been tithing and tithing and tithing. When are the windows of heaven going to open that I get that blessing that I can't contain? And Satan will make you seem as if God has forgotten you. See, if he can get you to feel overlooked and it can get you to feel like God has forgotten you, he can get you to begin to lose your confidence and your trust in Almighty God. That's what his strategy is. That's why he'll make it feel like God has abandoned you. But the Bible says that, and God assures us that he has not forgotten us. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. God can't forget us. His word says he has not forgotten us. He goes to great lengths to reassure us. Isaiah 49, 15 says, Can a mother forget the baby at her breast? Now, I want you to think about this. God is saying, can a mother forget a baby that is, is nursing the, 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 a mother that is nursing the baby at the breast? Can a mother forget and have no compassion on the child she has born? And then he says, you know what, though she may forget, it's unlikely, but though she may forget, God says, I will not forget you. Amen. Glory to God. 
He says, I will not forget you. Turn to somebody and say, God will not forget you. Say, God cannot forget you. And say, God has not forgotten me. Praise God. He says, though she may forget, I will not forget you. And then verse 16, he says, see, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. So he's trying to make his point here. He's trying to sort of give his, his, his argument. He said, I can't forget you. He says, look, I've engraved you in the palm of my hands. He says, your walls are ever before me. I love what the Amplified Version says. It says, behold, I have indelibly, that is permanently imprinted, tattooed a picture of you on the palms of each of my hands. Yeah. Oh, folks, your, your, your picture, your face is tattooed on God's hands. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God sees you all the time. Yeah. You are secure in his hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love it, indelibly. In other words, you are permanently imprinted, tattooed of a picture of you, of, of you on God's palms, uh, both hands, both hands, hallelujah. God has not forgotten you. That is, and why has he not forgotten you? You are engraved in the palm of his hands. Oh, glory to God. God cannot forget you just like he can't forget Jesus. I'll say that again. He can't forget you, just like he can't forget Jesus. You know why? We are the body of Christ. Hallelujah. He loves you just like he loves Jesus. Jesus brought that revelation that God loves us the same way he loves him. Hallelujah. In the book of John chapter 17. Hallelujah. We are God's beloved. We are his favorite ones. God has not forgotten us because we are engraved in the palm of his hands. God has not forgotten us because we are on God's mind. He's thinking about us. Psalm 8 verse 3 says, When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him? And the son of man that you visit him or you care for him or you love him. And the psalmist, I can imagine him outside in the evening and he sees all the stars and he's imagining. He didn't have a telescope, but he's imagining the awesomeness of God. And he looks at God's creation, the mountains, the valleys, and the wonders of creation. And he says, what is man that you should be thinking about him? We are on God's mind. You are on God's mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalm 115 verse 12 from the Good, the good, um, good Word Bible says this. The Lord is always thinking about us. He's always thinking about us. He's always thinking about you. Ah, he's not forgotten you. No, no, no. On the contrary, he's always thinking about you. And as he thinks about you, he's thinking of how to bless you. Glory to God. Glory to God. You know what? God doesn't have a single negative thought about you. He may not be pleased with some things you do, but his thoughts towards you are always good. So even when you sin, he's hoping, why don't you repent? It's a good thought. Why don't you turn to me? Amen. It's a good thought. He doesn't have a single negative, uh, evil thought about you. The Bible says in Psalm 139, 17, how precious are your thoughts about me, O oh God. They cannot be numbered. I not, want you to notice that word. How precious. God's thoughts about you are precious. They are valuable. They are significant. They're not ordinary thoughts. They are precious thoughts. The Bible says they cannot be numbered. And it goes on, I can't even count them. They outnumber the grains of sand. Ha! Man, he's thinking about you a lot. And he's thinking all sorts of good things about you. Say, God has not forgotten me. He has precious thoughts about me. Thoughts that can't be numbered. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Now, God is now giving us a window. And he's giving us an idea, a revelation of how he thinks about us. He says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. He's not talk, talking about the thoughts that your wife thinks about you or your mom thinks about you or your worker. He says, these are the thoughts of God. He says, the thoughts that I think of you, says the Lord. They are thoughts of peace. That word peace is a word shalom. 
It says the thoughts of peace, not of evil. So God doesn't have evil thoughts about us. It says thoughts to give you a future and to give you a hope. Somebody lift up your hands and say hallelujah. That word peace is the word shalom, the Hebrew word shalom, and it's a powerful word. Sometimes you lose the, the meanings when you just see one word like peace, and you, you're just thinking of peace in English. That word shalom is to be well, to be happy. It means welfare. It means health and prosperity. It means favor. It means good health, safety, wholeness, nothing broken. And that's the thought God has towards you. He has thoughts of your well-being, thoughts of your success, thoughts of your prosperity, thoughts of your health, thoughts of your wholeness. That's why he says he desires above all things that you prosper in all things and be in health even as your soul prospers. Glory to God. Man, I'm getting excited. I got to calm down, but it's good. Amen? He has thoughts about peace, thoughts of peace concerning me. He's thinking about my well-being. He's thinking about my good, my success. Hallelujah. You know why God has thoughts about you? And you know why God remembers you and never forgets you? Because he loves you. He loves you. God loves you. He loves us. The Bible says in Psalm 145, verse 8, the Lord is gracious and the Lord is compassionate. He's slow to, to anger. That means he's patient. He's rich in love. The Lord is good to all. It says he has compassion on all he has made. Hallelujah. The word gracious is the Hebrew word hanun, and it means to show favor. It's actually from another word, hanan, and it means to stoop in kindness to an inferior. In other words, we don't deserve the favors of God, but he wants to give it anyway. He's disposed to show favor. He's so, disposed to show kindness. That word compassion is the sympathetic awareness of a, another person's distress. And it's also the desire to make things better. So when God has compassion over us, he's sympathetic. He's aware, but he's sympathetically aware. Amen? And he desires to elevate that situation, to improve it. He's not dormant when he has compassion towards you. That's why everywhere Jesus went in the Bible, he says he was moved with compassion, then he healed. He was moved with compassion, and there were 5,000 men besides women and children. He provided food for them. He wanted to do something about it. Anytime he was moved with compassion, it was with the desire to help, to alleviate the distress, the suffering. And the Bible says God is gracious and he is compassionate. He's compassionate to all he has made. Oh, glory to God. God is so loving towards us that he sent his son Jesus Christ to seek us out, to help us out. The Bible says in Luke 19, 10, that the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. This is Jesus speaking. He says, look, the Son of Man, I have come to seek you out and to save that which is lost. He's, he's also come to save those who are healed, those who are diseased, those who are broken. He seeks us out even when we're unaware of it. That's why the Bible says, Romans 5, 8, God demonstrates his own love for us. That, that while we were sinners, still sinners, he sent Christ to die for us. That's because of his love. That's because of his compassion. I love Isaiah 61. It reveals the compassion of God to the purpose of the Messiah. Jesus actually quoted from Isaiah 61 in Luke chapter 4 after he was tempted by the devil in the wilderness. After he had been baptized, he was where he went. The Bible says he was led to the wilderness to be tempted. And after that, he came out in the power of the Holy Ghost. He was filled with the Holy Ghost in the baptism. And after the temptation, he came out with the power of the Holy Ghost. And then he went to the synagogue. That was, was his custom. And they opened the book where he should read. And it was Isaiah 61. And, I wonder, and, and it really was his mission statement. And it shows the heart of God. And, and from this, we're going to learn a few wonderful things. You know what? God remembers the poor. And he remembers the needy. So if you're in a place of lack and it's been a long time, I want you to know that God remembers you. He has not forgotten you. 
Isaiah 61 verse 1 says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news or good tidings to the poor. That was the first thing. He's concerned about the poor. He's concerned about the needy. Hallelujah. He's thinking about the poor. He's thinking about the needy. The psalmist says in Psalm 40 verse 17, But I am poor and needy, yet the Lord thinks upon me. The Lord thinks upon me. Then he says, You are my help, my deliverer. And he's saying, crying out to God, Do not delay. But the point is, he's thinking about you. Glory to God. You know, God is our provider. He meets all our need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Isn't that, a, isn't that a good news? You know, he's concerned about the poor. The Bible says that we know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. That though he was rich, yet for your sakes he, was, he became poor, that you through his poverty might become rich. You know why? Because God is concerned about the poor. He wants our needs to be met. That's why he revealed himself as Jehovah Jireh, the Lord our provider. He's concerned about the poor. God has a vision for the poor, and he shows it in his word. God wants to lift up the poor, raise up the poor and the needy, and he wants to seat them with princes. Psalm 113 verse 7 says, he raises the poor out of the dust, and he lifts the needy out of the ash heap. Why? Verse 8, that he may seat him with princes, with the princes of his people. You know, when the Bible says that Christ has made us to be kings and priests unto God. So God is concerned that we take our rightful place. Hallelujah. He seats us with princes. But notice what he does. He raises, he lifts us up. He lifts up the poor. He lifts up the poor from the dust. And he, he lifts up the needy. He lifts up the needy. Glory to God. The second thing God remembers in Isaiah 61 is the brokenhearted. He's concerned about the brokenhearted. Isaiah 61, it says, He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. God sent him, anointed him, empowered him. And he says, I want you to go look for the brokenhearted. Those who have been hurt. Those who are emotionally bleeding. Those who are wounded through abuse. Jesus was sent for you. He's concerned about the brokenhearted. He has not forgotten about you. Oh, you may be the only one right now. You know, you're brokenhearted. It's like nobody understands. God understands. And he wants to do something about it. That's why he sent his son, Jesus, to do something about it, to heal the brokenhearted. It doesn't matter what the cause is. If you have a broken heart, I'm here to say, Messiah was sent to heal you. He has not forgotten you. Psalm 147 says, he heals the brokenhearted and he binds up their wounds. Psalm 34, 18, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. Oh, folks, if you're brokenhearted, God is close to you. If you're humble in heart, God is close to you. If you're contrite in spirit, God is close to you. He's near, and all you have to do is call out his name. Hallelujah. But he's been sent to heal the brokenhearted. Brokenhearted. 